Oh, hello, welcome to the channel. My name is Jacob Paul with Inside Out Online. This video is designed for people that are just starting out. They've got their mandolin in their hands and they wanna play and they don't know where to start. Well, hopefully I can give you some pointers. This is day one for the mandolin. So there's a few things that we need before we start. First, we need a mandolin. I see you've got yours. So we're on to a good start. Um, we need a pick. I tend to use just a plain guitar pick. I'm, but everyone is uh, different when it comes to that. There are mandolin picks. They tend to be a heavier gauge pick, so they're a little thicker. I like a plain medium to medium heavy guitar pick, personally. And so basically you wanna just start out by avoiding a light, a real light pick. So if it's real flimsy, you might look into getting some th slightly thicker picks. Um, something else that we need to do is obviously we need to be able to tune our instrument. Music is no fun if it's not in tune, if it doesn't sound good. If it doesn't sound good, it's no fun. So you've just caught me tuning here. Uh, come hang out. Um, so you need to get a, a tuner. You can literally just get a mandolin uh, tuning app on your phone or iPad or something. I don't have one that I recommend, but everyone is going to kind of find the one that they like. You might have to spend between $2 and $10 for something that doesn't have ads and isn't going to glitch on you all the time. Um, but. Uh, Maybe try a couple different ones. Just go to your app store and literally type mandolin tuner or simple tuner, guitar tuner. Those all should have a way to tune a mandolin. And then some things related to the mandolin. Well, let's talk about it. This area here is called the body. This area here is called the neck. This area here is called the head or the headstock. You see a theme happening here. Uh, these are your tuning keys. You should have four on top and four on bottom. The top four tune the top four strings. Uh, and it goes in order, literally, from the very top one to the very bright one. It'll go this way until you've reached your brightest string. Something else that you'll probably want is uh, a printout of some of the most common mandolin chords. I'm going to put a download right in the description of this video for a printable uh, chart that shows the top eight to 10 mandolin chords that you, you need to know. The thing about uh, my teaching is that I'm never gonna waste your time on things that aren't practical and applicable to you right now. There's a lot of there's, you know, just like anything else complex, there's a million different ways to kind of approach the subject. And I like to jump straight in to the, the practical, simple, things like that, and build uh, a foundation in what is common, things like that. So you need to know your string names. Each string in its open, in its open position, I'm out of tune because we're gonna tune here in a minute, just plucking the top, this is a G. Now, these are both, all the way down, we, we really have two of the same in each one. So technically, these two strings, which again is a G note, technically they should be the exact same. And what it gives you is this kind of this droning sound where the two kind of partner with each other um, in the harmonic spheres. If you want to pause the video and come back, after you've gotten a tuning app, after you've taken a look or printed out that chord chart. So let's get a tuning app. I'm gonna tune. Tuning is something that might take you 10 minutes the first time. It might take you 20 minutes. Maybe you'll not get it tuned at all and you're just like, I need someone to help me. That's understandable. Cause you might get a mandolin in some condition where it's just like, you might be missing strings, things like that. Which leads me to one more thing. You need good strings. You need good strings. They need to be the same. One way to know if you need to change them or not is if you have heavy discoloration throughout or if you rub your fingers across and it comes up real rusty. It just feels like 
sandpaper going across these brighter strings on here. Of course, these top ones have a grit to them, but if they're heavily discolored and things like that, it's time to change the strings, which leads to, to another video somewhere out there. So on top, we have G. This string is D. This string is A and E. G, D, A, E. G, D, A, E. G, D, A, E. G, D, A, E. We want to put that to memory. I might see, say, let's go down to our A string, things like that. One more thing about the mandolin uh, is our frets. What happens when we play is we press into the string hard enough to where what was once vibrating from this piece here, which is the bridge, to this end here, which was the nut, it's vibrating from that point to this point, so it's a certain distance. What happens when we press in to the string is we shorten the string, and that makes the pitch be higher because we have a shorter string vibrating, and that's how the whole thing works. We change the pitch by shortening the string when we press in to these this metal bars here. These are called frets. This is our first fret. This is our second fret. On the third fret, you should have a dot. And I mean, maybe some of them don't have one on the third, but for sure you should have one on the fifth and seventh, and then definitely up here, there should be a double dot up here, which we really won't go up into this range very much, or not for a long time. But we should have double dots up here, and what that means is, it's the exact middle point between here and there, and if we half a string, if we take that note and we go into the, the 12th fret where those double dots are, we've halved the string, so what happens is, it's the same note, but what's called an octave higher, brighter. Hear how those are the same note? Dun, dun. They're the same note, but again, what's called an octave higher. We're already using technical terms. So, let's tune this thing. You can just observe me tuning my mandolin for now, and I'm gonna walk you through what I'm doing, and hopefully you'll pick up on some tricks from that. What I do is one hand kind of like holds the mandolin for now, but I come down here and I hold the tuning key with my left hand while also basically holding the mandolin. So you don't want to like hold it here, pluck the note, bring your hand back over here, turn it, bring your hand back over here to support it, play it, come back over here. You want to be in, in touch and tune with your tuning keys here. So I'm gonna hold I'm gonna hold this first one because I'm just gonna work my way down these strings, okay? So if you have your if I'm playing out of a computer or something with some volume and you have your tuning app open, then you'll be able to hear and see exactly where my strings are on the tuning app. Basically the idea is when you tune, which should be about every day, if not if you're playing more than that, you'll probably end up tuning maybe even a couple times a day. I tend to tune a couple times a day, but maybe I'm just extra picky. But again, if it sounds bad, it's no fun. We want it to sound good, so it's pleasant. All right, we said this should be a G note when I pluck this top one. Let's see where it's coming in. Get your tuning app open if you can. If not, I'll just kind of walk you through what I'm doing and hopefully you'll pick up some tips. So that, so basically, the top of the tuner is the point that we're trying to get to. It might be like a green light up there, and if it's um, below the tuner, then you need to lift the tune up, lift the string up uh, brighter. Notice when we turn this, one way goes higher in pitch, one way goes lower in pitch, and we're trying to find that equal point where the string should be at. Think about a tire. When a tire is flat, you need to pump some air into it. So if your note is coming in flat, which is what, let me bring it back down to where this was. 
about right there. I'm coming in flat. The tuner is saying we're too low, we need to pump a little air into it. A question that a lot of times people get confused about or frustrated about is which way do I turn it? Well again, for me, from, from my point of view, and it should be the same way with yours, if you'll turn it counterclockwise from your point of view, it should go higher. And if you go clockwise, it should loosen the string or take some air out of that string and make it go flatter. Flat in music is low. Sharp in music is high or up. Sharp is, if a note is too sharp, that means it's too high in pitch. If a note is too flat, that means it's too low in pitch and it needs to come up. So here's my G, we're gonna observe it again. And I'm gonna pluck the string every couple seconds. One hand, my right hand, is on my string and I'm plucking it every couple seconds while I'm, I'm, while I'm slightly turning this uh, till I get to the center. So I'm gonna be quiet and you'll just watch it come up real slow. Okay, that one's in tune. So I'm gonna go to my next one. Let's see where this one's coming in. I'm gonna make it out of tune a little bit. Here we go. Okay. This note, now make sure you're hitting the right string each time. I'm gonna go below the string and kind of pluck up on it. Just nice small strokes. I'm not, go nothing real big here. I'm just trying to control my pick nice and easy. I'm holding on to my neck with my left hand and some one way or another, I'm holding it so that I can be right here to my tuner. Coming in sharp, coming in too high. This tire has too much air in it and I need to take some air out. So I'm gonna tune it, turn it really slow clockwise to bring it down. I'm gonna keep plucking it and I'm gonna slowly turn it till it gets to where I want it. So in theory, these should be the same note. They are. They're getting along. Those notes are exactly the same wave size. I'm gonna go to my next string. This is my D string. I just tuned my two G notes, and now I'm gonna go to my next two strings, which of those notes are D. G is done, on to D. So I'm looking at my tuner, and I'm seeing that it's coming in flat. I've got my hand here, right here on my tuners. I'm gonna turn it really slowly, counterclockwise. Pluck my string, pluck my string, pluck my string. If your tuner can't hear the note, it doesn't know what to tell you. So you have to keep plucking it every few seconds. Oh, went too far. I think my tuners are a little goofy. So if I go too far, I'm just literally gonna come back the way I came, opposite. That's good for now. I'm gonna go to my next D string. I'm on my furthest one. It's okay to just watch this video. If you, this is the first time playing mandolin, just watch it and pick up on the, the little things I'm, I'm going over. It may be really difficult to get that thing in tune right away. If your strings are just completely wonky, like this thing has been in a in a closet for the last 20 years, it was your grandpa's or something and you're just getting it and it's completely wonky and you have no idea what to do. What, what you, you can, can do is listen to the pitch, the pitches that I'm playing and try to find them. And if you can get close, the mandolin will at least start to recognize those pitches again. It might come, be coming in like some crazy note, like F or whatever it is. So at least maybe try to match me if, if that's the case for you. I'm on my, on, my, on my next two, my next pair of strings. Again, it's just D. Those guys are good. So I'm gonna go to my next set of four total strings, my next couple pairs. So I'm gonna keep coming this way to my next string. Again, it goes in a circle as it goes down through the strings. So I'm to this string. This one's coming in pretty good. I'm a little bit flat. 
I'm gonna turn it, I'm tightening it. I'm trying to tighten it and pull on that string with my tuner, my tuning key. We are good, those are A. My next one is also an A, the second A. This one's coming in flat. That one's good. I'm gonna move on to my bright strings, my E strings. Keeping my left hand on the tuning key and my right hand on my strings, plucking those strings every couple seconds, turning it real slow. Good. Good. And this is what the string should sound like when they're in tune. It's pretty close, pretty close. If I'm being real picky, a lot of times I'll go through them twice. Again, remember, it might take you 10 minutes to tune this thing, and that's completely normal. The cool thing is next time you take tune it, it might be nine minutes. Next time, seven minutes. Next time, one minute. And before you know it, you'll be going, Done, next one, done, next one. And you'll be done in like 10 seconds, 20 seconds. And it won't feel like such a chore to get started here uh, after, you get, after you get going and you've done it a good 10, 15, 20 times. So before we stop, let's just review a couple things that we talked about. We talked about some of the parts of the mandolin and you'll wanna know what these are. The body, this is called a pick guard and it really just protects your, the wood of your guitar from a pick. So sometimes people are a little bit inward about their pick hits and so that'll scratch eventually, it'll scratch up the instrument and even after a long, long time of playing, it, you, can, you can even dig a hole into the, the guitar. This is the bridge. I, this one is it'll plug into an amp or something and I can turn it up and down to the amp. So that's what these knobs are for. You might not have those. This is the neck, this is the head, or the headstock. These are our tuning keys. This gets us in tune and sounding good. And then we have frets here. Now, the frets are important, and I'm gonna go over this in other videos too, so stick with it. But this is our first fret, second fret, third fret. Pretty much everything that we do is gonna be within the first three to four frets as we get started. This one down here in this open, when the strings are playing without any playing the notes, this is called our zero fret or just open. So open, you might practice before the next video, just kind of like pressing into your strings. And I'm gonna get into all that in the next video. Hope that was helpful. You might spend a week just trying to keep your mandolin in tune. Try to memorize your string names again, which was G, D, A, and E. My name is Jacob Paul with Inside Out Online, and I'm gonna see you on that next video.